Whoa! <laughs> hey, hey, everybody. See me, see you here. <laughs> Welcome. Today is Sunday, September 19th, the day before my birthday. How exciting! Not really, but... <laughs> um... You know, I I I, w I wanted to start get on this right away. Good morning, Nodens. How are you doing today? Or it's close to afternoon, or wherever you're at. Uh, for me, it's pretty close to afternoon. It's eleven thirty. So, uh, but yeah, uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, I'm going to be, you know, probably Voodoo will probably log on at some point in time today. We'll be uh, running our characters. I don't even know if he's on yet or not. I should hurry up and check real quick. <laughs> I'm an hour ahead. Okay, so you're just a little bit behind. Let me exit this real quick. I just let me check this. I don't, I just wonder. I didn't check to see who all was online real quick. So the the point of the purpose of today's stream, at least this part, the beginning part of it, is to uh, I want to do a series about a warlock. Um, you know, since it is a class that I have played uh, probably more than any other. Uh, well, uh, yeah, a lot more than any other class. Um, and I, I have become, even though it's not my preferred class that I want to play, I, I, you know, the name CMECU, which is the name of my character, really should belong to a rogue. Um, oh. Um, or is that? oh yeah, yeah, um, it's, CMC is supposed to be a rogue, I, I made that name for a rogue many, many years ago in the game EverQuest when I played it, and, um, so I really like to try to associate that name with him, but however, you know, I've ended up playing uh, a warlock, and you know, let me explain why I started playing a warlock. So, I've been playing this game since 2007. And uh, I played a rogue. I started off as a rogue, and um, you know, of course, your your um, level cap was a lot lower back then. I, I think I think when I played, it might have been level twelve. I think something like that. And you know, of course, it went up over the years. But as a rogue, I was getting destroyed. I was getting killed. I couldn't um, I couldn't do anything. Um, I was getting, you know, beat up, I was getting frustrated, and a lot of times I would quit the game and then come back later on and then, you know, play again for a while and quit again, blah, back and forth, back and forth. So, um, this final time when I come back, I had taken a two-year hiatus. Hey, welcome, Humble Friar. Welcome to the channel. Um, so the, uh, the reason why I came back this final time, of course, I, you know, I love Dungeons and Dragons, right? So... Uh, I spent a little time, and I always say this to any new player, you know, it really depends on what your, uh, it really depends on what you can afford to do and not to do. If you're a totally, completely free to play, you don't want to spend one dime on this game, you can play it, absolutely for sure. Uh, but this series that I'm trying to make, this is for a Warlock, and Warlocks are not free unless you have a subscription. If you got a subscription, then this pertains to you. If you want to play a Warlock and bang out past lives, this per pertains to you. If you want to kind of see the route that I go when I level up my Warlock, this video, this series will pertain to you. If you want to see, uh, get an explanation of Warlocks, what Warlocks do, uh, while leveling up and then at the high end when they get up at the top this video would be for you This uh, playing a warlock to me is a confidence builder char uh, character because um, You know they have good survivability especially if you play an enlightened spirit Which uh, which I'll just show that real quick because this is uh, this is a warlock right here But this is not the guy I'm going to be playing with for the beginning of the series. This is actually my main character um, you Enlightened Spirit is like a tanky build. It has a burst that you burst away from you as you uh, you get your first one here, you get your second one up here. You have an aura that constantly comes away from you anyway, uh, and so these are like these are like uh, just ways to damage monsters around you. It's not long distance damage unless you go decide to do focus blast and then you turn your blast into a single shot that shoots something far away. So, with that being said, 
I played the Enlightened Spirit build when I came back this last time because I just got tired of being beat up. I've seen Voodoo's build. It's on the forums, the Warlock forums for Enlightened Spirit. Um, I, I did not play mine identical to his. I wanted to put a little flavor into mine. I, he focuses more on tanking because he was in a group tanks with people so he needs that extra defense they do higher reapers i just wanted to have a guy that can get through content at least doing reaper one and you know an enlightened spirit warlock is the way to go with that even as a beginning character it should be no problem to go through it uh, you know you see need a little bit of gear not too much but you know and then know how to play the build um because when i was playing my rogue i couldn't farm anything i i sure couldn't do epic elites not at all. I was getting demolished, destroyed. It didn't matter. I just couldn't do anything. And uh, I was like, I, I had it, you know. So let me find something I can play and it'll be okay. And I've watched, you know, there's other melees that probably could do okay. Um, you know, maybe Paladins or something like that. But this, this, a Warlock is very easy to play. You don't have to do a lot of thinking, especially 1 through 20. You know, if you're somebody who don't like a lot of complex buttons and that kind of stuff, this is the route. So let me go ahead and uh, log out. Maybe it'll let me log out. It doesn't want to let me log out. No, stay, please. There we go. All right, I'm going to come down here to create. All right, so once again, assuming that you have access, so you're starting at level one. Yes, level one. Um, so let's just say you're starting out happy, as... Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy. Oh, well, thank you very much. What is that? Ola, Ola, te, Ola, te, Ola, 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 we'll just call you all. Olo. Welcome for the follow. I appreciate that very much. And welcome to the channel. I'm just going over uh, playing a warlock on in DDO. So I, once again, I'm going to assume that you are somebody who's never played a warlock before. Uh, that's kind of like what this is going to go for because I'm going to go from the basics. Uh, I, you know, as if you have a veteran status, you can start at level four, level seven. Uh, when you make your character uh, for for the first time that you make it, but we're going to assume that. This isn't, maybe this isn't your first character. I mean, it could be. I mean, it could be. Maybe you're a brand new player. Uh, but even if you're a brand new player, you're not going to get to start at four or seven. So uh, you have to earn that from veteran status. Although I think you can pay for it. But let's just say we're going to start level one and work our way up so we get a full understanding of Warlock. All right. So Warlocks are spellcasters. And come down here once again. These are not free to play. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to pop I'm going to keep on Firefox every so often and we'll pop this up on here. It's supposed to come up on there. There it is. All right. Warlocks. Warlocks are not free to play, but they're free for VIPs if you have a subscription. All right. But if you don't, you have to purchase it for 1,395 DDO points. You can earn DDO points in the game from doing quests, earning favor. It will take a while. I won't. I mean, not super long. But it will take, take a while to get uh, to get that many DDO points built up. You may pay a little bit of money and buy DDO points, and then you can buy the warlock class. All right, warlocks. What makes warlocks? Uh, what makes them in general? Uh, these are their, their class skills. Really, nothing really super big through here. Jumps. Spellcraft is something that you would want uh, to keep track of. You want to pump points into that. Um, you're going to be a charisma build, so you really don't need a lot of, uh, you don't need, need to use magic device that much because charisma affects use magic device. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Once again, and bluff, same thing. I mean, you could put some points in bluff, but I normally put my lot, well, you'll see as I make my character, I, concentration, spellcraft, uh, I don't mess with intimidate unless I was playing a tanky warlock and had people in my group and stuff like that. All right. Down through here, these are all the feats that are auto granted to them. Uh, you, you, of course, you get your Eldritch. You pick your pack, which pack you're going to play. Eldritch Blast, Magical Train. You get Magical Training. Um, uh, what deceive item? What is that? 
What is I forget what this is. Deceive item. Oh, you get plus five to use a magic device. So I mean that's nice to have for a warlock. You get pack your pack bonuses down here as you go up for your blast that you do. Basically, sis increases your your damage as you go down. So you know, like you, when you play melee, you get better weapons. But this is like better spell power going down through here for your for your blasts. Uh, let's see. Keep going down. Keep going down. All right. So these are your packs when you play a warlock. If you're new, once again, if you're new to a warlock, it this really depends on what your goals are, what you want to do with a warlock. Do you want to, um, do you just want to get racials done? Do you want to be in high level, uh, reapers later on when you get up into your, you know, level 29, level 30 levels? Uh, do you, what role are you going to play? Um, so the, a lot of that, you know, is, this is important to me. I think this is important down here because for a warlock, if you're just doing racials, Really, you can pick any of these uh, if you're just going 1 to 20. Um, cold and negative is going to be a little bit more of a struggle for you uh, because, you, you know, undead are immune to a lot of this stuff right here. Uh, the negative and cold. The electric, there's some things that are immune to electric. So, well, there's some things that are immune to acid and fire. Not as much, but, you know, there's things that are, have immunity to it. So you might not be doing as much damage to them, but you know, but it's easy to get any of these really geared up to get spell power to them and stuff like that. Sonic, uh, my opinion, is by far the best way to go uh, because uh, you don't have all you know. A lot of monsters don't have resistant to Sonic. Some do, but most don't. And so you're going to be doing pretty much your full amount of your damage. Once again, this is. Pretty important if you're going through one to twenty because you're going to your main attack is going to be spray. You're going to the cone shape, and I'll show you all that here in a little bit. Um, and this is this is very nice to have. On the high end, in game stuff, you would also want to look what what do your characters do down here that can benefit your party. Solo, you know, warlocks are not a solo. They can solo through heroics easily. But when you start getting into epics, can they still solo? Yeah, it's slower, but you're probably going to have a lot of difficulty um, getting through stuff. And especially when it comes to the boss at the end of a quest, you're going to be sitting there shooting at him all day long, jumping all over the place to avoid being hit. Uh, and, you know, it's just going to take forever. And you can grow bored with the game pretty quick because of how slow it starts to go. So, you know, Warlocks is definitely a grouping build that you want to have for when you, you know, get up into the epic levels. But you also want to bring something to the party. You know, you just don't want to be somebody in there just doing mediocre spell damage because, you know, Warlocks, their damage kind of falls off when they get into epic levels. So what else can you bring to the party? Well, warlocks are good with crowd control. They have some awesome spells. Let's. I'm gonna go down to the the end and work my way backwards. Uh, whale of the banshee. That's insta kills. It's just like a, a a whale that goes around you of banshees and, and kills anything that's not death warded and or if they don't make their save. Very nice to have. Uh, anything that survives that, you have hold monster mass hold mon the mass hold monster. Right, that throws a circle out, and anything within that circle, they get held. Very powerful. Um, symbol of death, you'll never stun. No dominate monster. No charm monster mass. No. Uh, Trap the soul is good for heroic only, not epic. That does nothing in epic. Tra excuse me. Trap the soul in heroics uh, turns the monster into a little shard that you can a gem that you can use in crafting and stuff like that not really used much for anything anymore but it's a great insta kill and it, i think it's against will uh, i think they're saving throw against will or something like that uh, they turn into it so it's like a finger of death you know pretty much you just bam they're dead uh summon monster no and disjunction no you will not be using those you won't be using no go back up to the ear you won't be using tensors wave of exhaustion no undeath to, undeath to death will be something good like so I'm, I'm talking about things what can warlocks bring to the party right undeath to death so when you're fighting undead a whole bunch of undead are coming bam you throw a circle down four things die undead right away very very strong very powerful to have uh, it reduces damage that your tank's taking and other people because you're eliminating four things right off the bat. Very nice to have. Uh, Finger of Death, you will probably not have that here. Actually, you won't if, if I explain to you what the high-end 
uh, warlocks are the top end when they when they play. You're going to get your finger of death from your enhancement tree. You can have two fingers of death, but you're going to have to either give up undeath to death or circle of death. Um, but I prefer having circle of death over top of finger of death because circle of death is a finger of death, except circle of death makes a circle and kills up the four things with within it and anything that doesn't die takes negative levels you know so th these are all all great to have shadow walk no invisibility mass no we'll get up to level five spells level five nothing nothing uh this, you really wouldn't take hold person mass there any i don't even i don't even know what i take at level five what do i take i think greater teleport <laughs> no that can't be right no, level five spells were these right here, the deaths, the undeath to death, circle of death, and uh, and that's it. There's nothing else, the circle of death and undeath to death. Yeah, none. you won't be taking any of this other stuff right here. Uh, level four, Everd's Black Tentacles, great crowd control, good damage, especially through heroics. Um... Flesh to Stone, no. Waves, no, no. None of this. Hold Monster, no. True Seeing, no. I mean, Teleport, you could pick that up, but I get protection from Elements and the Tentacles. Those are very important to have together. Uh, let's see. Let's go up to three. Level three. Dimension Door. You'll end up getting that. Uh, displacement is nice to have. Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much it that you'll be getting from there yep uh level two you know you're getting down to pretty blur is nice to have invisibility um that's pretty much it for you get web granted to you if you're in um you get web web granted to you for free and uh the enhancement tree at the bottom you'll see that eventually uh, and then, of course, level one, night shield or shield to block against magic missiles. Very important to have. Other than that, uh, maybe jump and, and feather fall, stuff like that. So, but that's that, you know, that's what the warlock spells. And that's something that you're bringing to the party to help, you know, do something. You just don't like, so you just don't be running around spray, spray, spray or, or whatever. You want to, you know, what what's the point of having that? You'd rather have somebody who nukes really hard and big like, you know, a sorcerer or a wizard or something like that, but <clears throat> I always go Night Shield. I go for, I go Night Shield too. I, I do it because of the saves also. That's my, my preference. So when you're looking at all these different packs and it's like, okay, well, what, what would they do at the top end of the game? Well, a cold pack will give you uh, a couple dots, right? You'll get Creeping Cold, uh, Nyx, Biting Cold, Greater Creeping Cold, Ice Storm, right? The, these these are nice to have. You know, you get a pack of monsters together, cast Ice Storm or whatever. The, okay, that's good. But what really makes this, this build really good is at least you have Absolute Zero. You can take out one monster. It's it's like it's like an insta kill, but it doesn't kill them. It just freezes them. They'll never unfreeze, so it, the, they're permanently frozen forever. I think that they used to just stay like that, but people took advantage of that in the game, and you know, this whatever. It it's not an exploit. They just took advantage of the way that the developers, I guess, didn't want people to do. I don't know what people used it in, but you know, they use it to our advantage that they should. But now, Absolute Zero monsters explode after a while. After they're frozen, I guess they just be, become destroyed. Um, so, uh, Ice Storm is great, and it works against monsters that are death warded. So, like, when we play Warlocks, we try to do insta-kills when you have Finger of Death, Circle of Death. If something's death warded, they, they're immune to the insta kills, but they're not immune to ice storm. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, not immune to absolute zero. It, it'll still freeze them. So that is a benefit of having playing a cold pack because of that. However, that's only one thing that the warlock can do. Is it is it awesome to have? Sure, it is awesome to have. Plus, you can add a little bit of DPS to the boss at the end. You know, if you're fighting in a group. That's nice to have, but other than that, there's not, there's really not too much stuff about this build that that's super exciting. Uh, Abyss, yeah, well, there's nothing about the Abyss other than you get a nice dot, rend the soul, 
But other than that, uh, you're undead. You play an undead. You do negative damage or whatever. There's there's so so many things that are uh, immune to everything to that kind of damage. But uh, channel the abyss as your undead shroud, and then you have death or which you know regenerates your health because it's a death or around you. But it's not enough. You know this 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 uh, this pack needs uh, help. This is. This this build brings really nothing to the party, so I would not ever, <laughs> ever play this for in a group. Uh, Electric is the only one I can't say anything about because I've never played one. I but when I look at what they're what they bring to the to the party, uh, <laughs> prayer or whatever, attempt to obliterate an undead so you can instantly kill one undead creature. Yeah, it's okay. Freedom of movement, but most people have freedom of movement. It's, it's nah. There's so nothing about electric that's exciting. Uh, acid, great for if you're soloing uh, in the heroics because you have knock, uh, so you can open up doors and lock chests and stuff like that. Phantasmal Killer is actually a uh, pretty decent insta kill. You got to get up your illusion saves, but you know it's a nice insta killer to have. The dominate person, I don't, not too many, I don't ever really see many people use it or create thrall, mass suggestion, you know, might be a little kind of form of CC, uh, power word kill. Okay, so you, you got two things, at least an acid, that can get rid of, that can get rid of monsters. So that's nice to have. This would make for a good tank lock, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah, they, they probably would do okay there. Uh, fire, the fire lock, once again, go down through here, eh, command, meh, rage, mm. uh, dark one's lock, plus two to all saves, nice to have, you know, the guinea kind of plus two to saves, I mean, these other ones have got some saves and stuff like that too, I didn't mention those, but, uh, fire shield's okay, but, you know, through heroic, stuff's dying so fast, it's really pointless. And even if something did hit on you, they're not going to be taking a ton of damage and dying anyway. And when you're in high-end stuff, you sure don't want anything to be pounding on you anyway because you're going to end up, you're going to end up dying. So you're, you're, you're trying to keep away from stuff. Uh, fire shield is really kind of pointless and high end. Binding chain's nice to have. Uh, that's kind of like uh, it binds a monster to, that slows them where they're walking around really slow. If you ever, um, what is it? I I think that's also in the fate um, the bard epic destiny tree. What is that? The fate singer tree. I think they have like a binding chain in there, and. Uh, yeah, and then plus if you play Vision of Destruction, is that what it's called? Yeah, VOD, uh, you uh, can get chained by Sully and you're moving around <laughs> real slow. So it's nice to have if you're, you know, it's kind of like a CC. If there's champs coming at the party, you know, it, it's good to have, you maybe throw chains on the champ if you can't instantly kill it. Uh, at least slow it down a little bit, you know, keep it back through there. Uh, but so fire, uh, fire warlocks, their bread and butter is hurl through hell. This is like their main thing to instantly kill something. Problem is, once again, if something's death warded, it, it does nothing. Uh, they, they can become stunned, uh, from it. I, I think that's what it does. It's if they, or if they make their save, I think they become stunned. Uh, exile one enemy from this existence. Any succeeding the uh, will warlock charisma is instantly paralyzed and helpless for the next six seconds. That's not very long, um, but it's more than nothing, right? So, um, but yeah, this. Uh, <laughs> All right, power word blind. Not too many people use it. Here's a good form of CC. Howl of Terror. Very nice to have. I've played Fire Warlock quite a few times. And, uh, you know, when you say, what do you bring to the party to really help? You've got an insta-killer here, along with your other um, finger of death and stuff like that that you get from your enhancement tree and uh, circle of death, stuff like that. But at least Howl of Terror is a good form of crowd control. You could almost spam this thing nonstop. Well, not nonstop, but within the cooldown, the, the cooldown period of this thing, Howl of Terror. Where's the cooldown? Does it even say what the cooldown is? Uh... Cooldown is six seconds, but your foes are paralyzed six to twenty-four seconds. Works on Reapers. Uh, it does not cause helplessness, so things will not take extra damage. But they are paralyzed in fear. Uh, very, very nice to have. 
uh, for crowd control because um, you know you don't have to worry about things that are death boarded or uh, death packed or death anything. Uh, doesn't work against undead, uh, but still, you know, Howl of Terror works just about on anything else. Uh, and if your DCs are really good for it, uh, you're pretty much golden for keeping crowd control, especially if you're you know, you're up against uh, the tank. You know, you're close to the tank, and things are beating on them, and and you're able to just you know get up beside them and do a Howl of Terror. Things they're paralyzed, so they're no longer beating on them. So that's that's something something to think about or if uh, a monster's chasing your your cleric around your or your healer trying to beat them down you can hurry up and run up to where that monster is at do a howl of terror and uh it's you know it's a good form of cc if you if it's if you can't eliminate it by finger of death or something like that all right so then my the last one that would come to is fey which is this is sonic spell damage and this is the one that that like I said, me personally in my play style, this is the one I think it brings the most to the table. It's awesome for leveling up through heroic levels. You don't have to worry about monsters resisting your, your damage. What do you bring to the hot top end of the game along with all the other stuff that you can do? Man, is it crowd control. All right, so obscuring mist, not too bad. You throw up a mist, uh, things are kind of, it's, really it's not used. People don't use this thing that much that I know of. I mean, the kobold shamans will, but um, it just puts a fog up and, and things inside it have a 20% chance of misting attacks due to consumer. So, I mean, something like that's okay, right? You throw it, maybe throw it up around your tank. If your tank doesn't have it, then stuff has a, a chance of missing them. You gotta, you gotta think about these type of things, the things that help your party out right little 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 things that you can help add to it to create to help success of, of your of your group getting through a quest uh blindness it's, it's okay you know once again maybe there's a, a champion coming you just tried to finger of death it it, it it's it has death ward and it looks angry you know it's getting ready to beat on somebody you know you might be able to cast blindness on it and, and you know anything to help with it missing might help dark delirium is also a nice little form of crowd control uh, a lot of people overlook this, but Dark Delirium is like, it, it can't, well, let's see what it says. I mean, it, it, it confuses the monster, just kind of puts them in a daze. Uh, it says, you know, plunges one's enemy mind into an illusionary uh, realm, the enemy's daze for, for, and cannot act for 20 seconds, right? It, but unless it's damaged, then there's a 10% chance it can break free. There's no saving throw for this, right? So and anything that has no saving throw is is great to have there's a champion in the background you try to finger of death it it's still coming because it's death warded what else can you do it there's a bunch of stuff going on man i'm gonna hurry up i'm gonna run up dark delirium that guy now he's cc'd he's over there as long as nobody's doing damage to him perfect he's just going to stay over there for up to 20 seconds as long as nobody's damage him and you can hit him again you know with another dark delirium later on it, these kind of things just have to be self-aware of what's going on around you uh, slow. I, I never really use it that much. I don't even honestly, from reading this, I don't even know if it works on bosses or not. It it doesn't say whether if it does or does not. So I I I've never used it, so I really don't. I don't know. I'll have to when I when I play it. I'll have to look next time. Hurry up and look at the buffs and debuffs on a monster and see if slow works. But if it even at the when I mean boss, I'm talking about like a red name boss, not the the end monster that well i guess any i guess it would be red name if there was a boss at like you know the end of sharn or something like that i don't know if it works on stuff like that but anyway uh greater dispel magic uh it's nice to have for spell wards um but it's you know it's something i've really never had to use there's not too many places in the game that that have spell wards up definitely see it a lot more in evening star stuff um, so it's definitely nice to have out there. All right. Wow. Here we go. Now, I mean, like I said, this has all been nothing but good, good, good so far. Here is a, your first really, I call the oh crap button. Misty Escape. Wow. So you got a bunch of monsters coming around you. They're, they're ganging up on you. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain something else that I do with it too. I mean, it's good for like Leap of Faith too, where you can leap through the air like, um, uh, favored souls do where they, they get the leap. And, uh, I think in one of the Epic destinies, you can do a leap also, but, um, 
you know, if you make a jump, you're jump through the air and then you can do miss the escape. It shoots you forward. So sometimes you can make that longer jump or whatever that you need to make. All right. Miss the escape is also like, uh, what I say? Leap of faith, abundant step, whatever it's called. Um, the, uh, you have a bunch of monsters around you. They're, they're beating up on you. They're getting ready to kill you. Miss the escape, right? What does miss the escape do? It propels you forward. It, takes you through stuff it like makes you an ethereal like you become invisible you charge for it during your escape you move through the monsters if you were ethereal these effects last for six seconds very nice to have uh to get you out of trouble and like say for example if i'm in a party and you know voodoo is tanking i jump in on top of him cast whale of the banshee I stay there until I might take a first hit. If I take a hit, then I will miss the escape out of there. But I try to stay in there as long as I can to kill as many things as I can, uh, you know, to eliminate a whole pack of monsters. Uh, and then once again, like I said, if something's chasing me, it's got me backed into a corner. Boof, miss the escape right through it. Let me see real quick. Fire is kind of right there. So I got there. That is either moon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, exactly. Like, uh, uh, constructs, uh, you face a lot of construct, the metal constructs in, in, in this game and, you know, anything else fire based. I mean, at least if something's immune to fire, you still have your, you still have your eldritch damage, you know, that, but that's, you know, your, your, your spell power is in half because nothing's taking your pack damage. So, but, uh, but yeah, um, Auto sphere of dancing. Wow, another form of crowd control. Look how much crowd we got. Crowd control here. We got a uh, uh, little, a little bit of crowd control with obscuring mist, blindness, or whatever. Uh, but yeah, auto sphere of dancing. You throw up a sphere, things start. They start dancing in place. You know, if you have really good high DCs, great form of crowd control. Things are just go dance in place, and your party's going to beat them down. Nice to have. Auto's Irresistible Dance. Another crowd control. Instant. Single target. No save. You have to get through their, you have to get through their, any spell resistance they might have. But if, you know, if you have a lot of spell penetration and stuff like that, normally it's not a big deal. Works on Reapers. Great, great spell to have. Somebody's chasing your cleric around. Something's beating on it. A champion. Auto's Irresistible Dance. Bam. Real quick. And there you go. It gives time for whoever to get away from it. Um, something's coming at you real quick. Irresistible Dance. Boom. Real fast. Very powerful. So that's why I said the, you know, Sonic Warlock brings a lot of stuff to the table. And, uh, you know, now that I've, I've went over all the different packs, you know, everybody has a preference, you know, everybody gets comfortable with their own pack and I don't really have, you know, I won't take that away from anybody. Whatever feels comfortable you playing is playing because everybody has different play styles. But for me, when I play and I think of what can I do as a warlock that brings most to the party, how can I benefit my party the most, where people are like, I'd like to have him in my group. You know, he would be, you know, he would be uh, a, a valuable asset. STN, welcome to the channel. And thank you for the 25-bit song there very much. I appreciate that. So when I when I think of top end stuff, high end stuff, what do I bring to the party? Crowd control, insta kills. I I try to bring order to the chaos that goes on in pools. Uh, I I have the I look around to see what is going on around me. I I think ahead of what's going to happen. You know, sometimes I might I know that something's coming up. I might go ahead and throw a sphere down, or I might be in a position where I can see something and go ahead and maybe finger of death it. But you know, because maybe I can like look around and see that there's a group of monsters, there's a champion in the background, and uh finger of death, bam, and it's dead, and you know, and then everything's starting to come, the tank you know, doesn't have to worry about something beating on them extra hard or hitting hard or that thing running around going crazy, killing everybody. So it's, you always have to be attentive, attentive, <laughs> is that word, attentive to what's going on. All right. Got Missy Escape done. We already talked about the Warlock spells. And like I said, let me just reiterate one more time going over Warlock spells. 
high end once you get to the you know your 2930 what are you doing well of the banshee oh, mass hold monster that's all that you that that is your two spells that you're taking in there because uh, let me look real quick here it should tell you so you only get to pick two spells uh when you get to um well you only get to pick two spells period out of any of those uh the rest are uh you get bonus spells uh from something else but you only ever get to pick two spells from each uh from each level which kind of sucks but all right i get it it's fine no big deal but yeah well the banshee insta kills hold mass monster crowd control up here on death to death if you're killing if you're planning to be at a place where there's going to be a lot of undead if you know that your party ahead of, ahead of time is not going to be fighting anything undead if you have like um if you know what your schedule is going to be what you're going to be doing like you plan everything out and it's like okay we're going to be doing undead um three or four days from now you can actually change your undeath to death to finger of death and uh have that but you definitely want to have circle of death you do not want to give that up you want to have circle of death and then it's either finger of death or undeath of death depending on what you're going to be fighting uh you can switch this these spells back and forth every three days at a warlock trainer a lot of people didn't know that uh there's a three day cooldown if you want to exchange spells before then you have to use uh is it dragon's blood i think that you have to use um which you can get from uh every life that you do from doing Argoness and um, uh, Favor, instead of picking the Claps Portable Hole, uh, you can pick the, the Dragon Blood Ink or whatever. I forget what it is. It's something like that that allows you to change your spell. And the same with the other, uh, uh, I think Sorcerers too, it works for them, allows them to change their spells out. But um, but I would I normally pick Undeath to Death because it's just so nice for having uh, for that. Uh, and like Circle of Death, Undeath to Death. Uh, we're already done with the two spells for there. Up here, uh, do, 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 do. Ebert's Black Tentacles, another great form of crowd control and damage. Very nice to have. That's one of the spells. Level four. Uh, where's the other one at? The Tentacles and... Am I missing it? Tentacles. Oh, and Protection from Elements. That's the other one right here nice to have um go up to your third level spells uh dimension door and displacement very nice to have these are important things uh for your character all right I should, uh, let me do something. I'm gonna, I gotta log in my other account just so I can keep track of when Voodoo's going to, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm going to be doing multiple series and a lot, a lot of stuff. Of course, I'll be clipping this and, and organizing it a lot better and then putting it into something more organized. Um, I want to, uh, but I, I'm also going to be leveling today with Voodoo, so I need to, I'm gonna log on my other account and, uh, that way I can keep track of guild chat. I'll just be a moment. Oh, thank you, humble. Yeah, because you might, you might, I might not have, I won't have the screen up. I really won't see it unless I keep clicking over and looking every so often. And plus, you'll know what the name of my character is here in a minute anyway, so you might be able to let me know. I would assume that's, I would assume that's who logged on and started streaming because I heard my phone go off. I don't even know if he's on. Is he on? Is he streaming? Or was that a tell? No, well, he's streaming. Or is that me streaming? No, that's me streaming. I'm the one who's streaming. L and Little Mama, yes. Yeah, okay, so he's not on yet. Okay. <laughs> My phone is just telling me now of people streaming. It's, it's a little slow today. All right. 
now that we went over all these things with Warlock, let's make them, right? We decided which, which pack we're going to do. Once again, what is your goal right now for Warlock? Do you want to take them 1 to 20 and work on racial past lives and that's it? Or are you going 1 to 30 and getting Reaper experience? Because how, how you're going to build him up uh, is how which feats you're going to take. And I already got Matrim's Builder pulled up here, and I will go over that with you real too if you've never seen that before. All right. Actually, well, before I even create this character, let me go ahead and show that because that's something important to do too, to have. If you're not familiar with Matrim's uh, character planner builder thingamajiggy here, uh, what, which one do I have for that? Uh, let me see. Is this it? What is that? Oh, that's green screen. I'm not doing that. Sound of display capture. Is that one it? That's it right there. All right. So, let, I'm just going to hurry up and bring this up and bring the link up. Matrum uh, Planner. I can just, whatever. So that's close, right, close enough right there. Here is a character planner. I'm going to put this link here. Awesome to have. What does this do? Well, let me show you. It does nothing for you if you're for level one, two, three, four, hard. Okay. This shows you what you're, you know, one to 30. This is what the, all the feats that you're going to take file new. All right, whatever. I'll call me Therna. Ooh, we got so many different races to pick and stuff like that, man. What do we want to be? Mm. Well, we're gonna have. Well, like I said, once once again, it depends what your goal is. If you know, if you're doing racials, you're going to, you know, these are going to be changing all the time your race. But I'm just going to go with human for right now and true neutral. Uh, new, neutral. Uh, some of the packs, whatever pack you pick, some of them you can. There's certain um, alignments that you can or cannot be. So that's something you want to you want to think about when you're when you're making your character. All right. Uh, where would you put your points at? We're going to assume that you are... Well, that's not going to come up yet. It's not going to go to 36-point build right away until you have... Um, where is it at? Is it up here? Hold on. I haven't used this for a while. I have to remember which one uh, which one it is myself. Epic feats and that Lamania preview mode. A lot of times I just gotta click on them and figure it out that way. Is that it? No, it's not stances. It's not that one. That one actually popped up on the other screen. I don't need the items up right now. Don't need destinies. Don't need that. Not stances. Get out of here. It's it's your past lives that I'm trying to find. Get out of here. Where are you at? That's not it. That's not it. That's leveling up. That's over there. I don't, I don't know why that should... Here we go. Jeez. Gotta click through a hundred things. Alright. These are your classes right here. These are class past lives. If you have class past lives, you would put them in here. Uh, I'm a completionist, so I could click, you know, one of all of these... Uh, I have had just about all my racials, but to get a 36 point build, all it does is require you to have two past lives, bam, bam. So that way I just put it up. So now I have, you see what that did up there? It changed those up top. See, 32 build for the first one. Once you get your first past life, 34. Once you get your second past life, it can be any of these, just whenever, and now it's 36 point build. All right what points do you put in and what where etc 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 all right your dc caster you want your charisma maxed out first off boom you want some hit points you max out your constitution boom you got that all right you got four points left intelligence there you go you don't need strength you don't need dex you don't need wisdom you, you just these are your three important ones you have con for the hit points you have charisma for your DCs and you have intelligence to give you 
more um, skill, um, the bonus points for your skills. Uh, tome, if you have a tome, go ahead and add it in there. Uh, like I have a I have a plus eight tome, but this is a brand new character, so I don't have that. Um, I probably even ain't gonna be able to do this either because he's a brand new character. It's only gonna be a thirty-two point build, but um, all charisma for your skill ups right here. Now, mind you, this is this is for a caster warlock. Uh, if this was a tanking warlock, I would not. I mean, I still would have Constitution of 18, but all my skill ups would be in Constitution, and I probably would not have an 18 Charisma. It would be more like a, a 12 or something or whatever, and then and I would put maybe some points in Dexterity to help my AC a little bit or what, whatever. I, you can. It really don't matter. So you, your your main thing is that you're keeping on top of your Constitution. If you were playing a tanky warlock, but we're not doing that. We're talking about spell casting DC warlock right now. All right, so that takes care of that. What about your level ups? All right, we got it. We are a warlock, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick that. What this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and fill in all the automatic stuff that it takes anyway. So that's what that was just doing. It was giving you everything that it normally gives you as a warlock. It put it over here now that I'm a warlock up here. And now, it may look a little confusing at first. You're like, oh my god, there's, what is this stuff down here? What is this up here? What is this over here? You really only need to focus really on this right now if you're looking at this. What are we taking at level one? All right, this, I didn't mean to do that. This is level one warlock. It, I can highlight each one of those and all this stuff will change as I go down. It's going to tell me what my automatic feats are. I'll just pull this out a little bit. This is what I'm getting automatic at each of these right here. But let's go back to level one. What would you want to take? Well, it depends what you want to do as a, as a warlock. What's your goal? If you're taking, if you're if you're just planning to go one to twenty, and you're not you're not plan and you're planning to reincarnate, then you really never need to focus on a lot of your DCs like necromancy and uh, enchantment and stuff like that because you're going to be reincarnating and heroic the dcs and all that stuff is is minimal anyway you know except maybe sharn might give you a little bit of a fit but it shouldn't still be any problem as long as you have your charisma as high as possible and, and some gear that give you pluses to your dc should be fine don't need to get like uh spell focus ne in necromancy and greater necromancy and all that that type of stuff so let's just assume that um well, I'm, I, eventually I'll probably have to break the video into two videos because it's one's going to have to be focused for if you're just going one to twenty, and then the other ones if you're going to if you're going to go one to thirty, and then you need the DCs for it because I would actually let skill these up differently. Uh, with the first one though down here, let's just say this is my DC warlock, right? Um, I really wouldn't need to focus mess with necromancy right now, but. Let me add one more thing in here. If you have the money, or if you have the astral shards or whatever, you can go ahead and do this here for your leveling up process. You can go ahead and take mental toughness and improve mental toughness. These add these add to your, your crit chance for your spells. It'll only be 2% more, but 2% is better than nothing. You would also focus on toughness itself to give you more hit points you really would not need to focus on empower or maximize unless you want i mean maximize maybe you can squeeze in there uh quicken you definitely want to have um but you don't need to really focus on a lot of dc type stuff you just want to focus on stuff that's going to keep you alive no force of personality uh, none of that kind of stuff which adds your charisma modifier uh, instead of your wisdom for will saves it's not needed it's not needed so what would I start off beginning with um, honestly I, I don't know I, I, it's easier for me to look at the, at the game instead of that thing hold on let me turn this up real quick display capture oh he fell asleep 
He got tired of waiting for me. Okay, thank you. See, I only get on a 32-point build. But I definitely want Charisma pumped up. I want my Constitution pumped up. But obviously, I'm not going to be able to take it all the way up. I will at least want to have a 12 Intelligence. I still got two points left over. You know, where do I put those? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to be able to at least get here, but I, you know, I, I can't. I don't have anything in there, so I'll probably just do like you know dexterity. Yeah, that that'll be fine. Or strength. It it really don't matter. Do strength. You'll be able to you know carry in more items. You know, not be so burdened. But I'll do dex. What do you pick? Uh, concentration. Uh, spellcraft. I'm going to be a Fey Warlock. Fey uses Sonic power. Sonic is not part of spellcraft. If you hover over spellcraft, this is like all your other spell types except for positive, negative, repair, rust, and Sonic. If you want Sonic damage for your spray or your your blat, your pack damage, you got to come down here to perform and pump pump some points into that. That way, that'll help with a little bit more of your spell damage. Uh, let me see. What else would I take? Uh, definitely want to get use magic device. But like I said, I don't have to put too much into it because, you know, I'm like I said, this is based on like if I'm going to be a DC warlock. Um, you know, one in there is just fine. You can have jump, so you can jump around a little bit higher. Intimid no, not intimidate. Bluff. I'm just putting points in the ones that I think that I'll need. Uh, you know, balance or tumble. Tumble's okay, so you don't take as much damage if you fall. At least put one point in that. The way if you, because you're not getting anything if you don't at least put one point in it. If you, at least you put one point in there, you're getting some kind of modifier to it. All right, spell wise, what do we want for spells? All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. I probably will come down here. First of all, I'm going to pick Fay. I want it. That's my pack that I'm doing. I will probably pick Mental Toughness. Or did I just go past it? Mental Toughness. Why do Mental Toughness? Because it's giving you a 1% chance increase uh, in critical chance of damage. So I will go ahead and take that. I really, because I really have no need for, like, say, Quicken right now, or because um, uh, there's nothing that I'm really casting that's really going to need that. I could pick toughness for hit points if I wanted to. Might be important being a first first time player. You can pick that. You switch. You would be switching these things out later on. Mental toughness and and toughness. You'd be switching those out later on if you were going to thirty. You would swap them out for like necromancy, greater necromancy, uh, enchantment, that kind of stuff. Um, let's see. Let's see. I would say let's go ahead and take maximize spell for no reason <laughs> that would take toughness go next what do you want from here night shield sometimes I can never find it there is night shield you want night shield to protect from magic missiles next neutral oh what should we call it the uh well, I did name him Etherna. I deleted Etherna, but uh, maybe how about yeah, Lock series. I do this. Make it is it's how you can't even spell series right. Lock series, Etherna. I get Etherna from uh, uh from um the Amber Temple. Boom.
I don't even see how many people are... Hold on one sec. Sorry about this. I'm just checking. I don't even know how many people are within the level range who are... Actually, I don't even see any... Who is, who is even on that's within level range? Ina, Jimmy, Little Mama, Purple. That's four. Myself would be five. Voodoo would be six. Torrin seven. <laughs> so it's no big deal. I don't need to. I could just sit here and do this. Tell you the truth. All right. So if you are if you are a veteran, if you have veteran status, you don't have to start at level one. You can start at level four or level seven. But once again, just say this: you're already playing a character, or even if you're if you're new, you wouldn't really have the options to do this anyway. Because if you have reincarnated your character you're not going to be able to do uh, pick these anyway this is only for a brand new character uh, starting for the very first time and if you're brand new to the game you really wouldn't have these anyway I think you could buy them maybe from the DDO store I think the veteran statuses are available to purchase I'm not 100% for sure but I think you can I'm going to go ahead and start at level 1 you can buy them okay alright Thank you. I, I thought so. I thought I've seen that in the store before, but it, it's been been a long time. Let's see. If you choose this option, you will leave veteran status area. Yes, this is all a dream. The air the airship craft. It's time to wake up. Go to Corthos and start as level one. You find yourself waking on a shore of flotsam. Can you talk? All right, so your stuff's all over the place. You can go ahead and spend a little time working on your UI, getting your UI set up, turning the proper stuff on and off, getting everything set. I'm going to go ahead and type my little thing in. UI, layout, load, CMECU, boom. Everything moves around. So get your UI set up. app set up there we go and that's it other oh, than oh i'm missing oh, one thing what am I missing? Dead, are you? missing that one let's step in here Have you moved? so come down here Talk. Speak to me. Right, right. All right. This dude wants to talk to you. You know, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna go through the storyline. Um, I'm not gonna skip it. Like I so said, this is like what if you're a beginning player. Was true. No one but you made it to the island. Get, I forgot. Get your. Make sure you turn on your 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 <laughs> your pack. Wow. Get that turned on. This is my main attack. It's going to be the uh, spray, 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 or not the spray, but this focus target. Uh, I'm not going to be sneaking. There's my one spell. There's search. I will not be using. I doubt I'll be using mist or anything like that. But follow me. Now you can attack. If you have your blast on, turned on, you actually have to turn it off, and then and then you can attack like that. Uh, we'll get a heavy mace from him. As you take hold of the weapon, I get all all kinds of beginning stuff because of my expansions and stuff like that. Power of evidence, whatever. I'll put that on. I get plus skill tomes. And we'll never be using that. Get rid of it. There, throw my cloak on. Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't need all this stuff. I don't. I don't need the animals. Don't need the pets. I shouldn't even clicked on. I should just destroyed the thing. Now I gotta get rid of all this stuff. Uh, 
13, 4, got key. What is that? Too much stuff. Jeez. Let's put it all back here. Here we go. You can change your weapon out right here, but once you say what task, you can't do it. If you want to pick a different weapon, talk to him, go. You can smash stuff here if you want to. Blah, blah, blah. Smash, 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 whatever. There's healing pots in some of these. Little starter healing pot. Yeah, see right there. I'm gonna play this warlock just like if anybody else has played one for the first time what would you be doing I'm gonna I'm gonna do it like that. I'm gonna go through all the levels I want to keep track of all the leveling and and stuff like that I uh, just I don't know all right I'm ready to go let's go she puts a buff on you if you ever played this game before you cannot die in this beginning part of the game There's a ladder for you to go up. Let's drop down the other side. You definitely want to take time to set up your, your hot bar to get uh, your keys used to how you want to do them. I do have a video that I made on that, how I set up my bar. I'll probably make a, a newer one up to date or something like that, but I use the number pad uh, for everything over here. You know, my keyboard is more over that way. It's, I'm, I'm over on the very right side of the keyboard. I like that a lot better than playing with you know the WASD and everything's offset over there and you gotta shift this and control that and it's I'll, for me it's just so much easier having you know the, the plus symbol and the up and the uh, arrows and page down and end and page up and the divide sign plus sign and the minus all these things are hot you change them to hot keys you know the number pad the movement up down left right and then you know number five in the middle goes a hot key for something and my jump is zero on the big button that's on the number pad I actually pop out the enter key the enter key that's on the number pad because if you're if your finger hit because as you're smashing the buttons and your finger hits the enter key well now you're just typing numbers into the chat box <laughs> so it's, it, you're not the one anything i got tired of i get tired of hitting it so i just pop that sucker right out <laughs> hey wolf how are you doing today what I'll do is I'll play this I'll play this since I you know this is already probably like a lengthy video I've been already on for an hour but like I said I, I talk for a good bit and I'll, I'll clip it to try and make it a little bit shorter uh, and then put it on there and then I'm just gonna like I said I'm gonna just start making a series All right, you can't get out here. It tells you up here you need to find a key. Hydrophobia. He's scared of water. You come down and get the key. You can see that you're running out of breath while you're down here, so you don't want to dilly-dally too long. You'll start taking damage if you stay down here. I'll let you see what happens if you just... It's actually pretty cool down through there. All right. You can see how fast the life... But I have a buff on. I don't think I can actually die. Can you die? Unable to hold your breath for any longer. Water fills your lungs. You are fortunate 
All right, so what happened is I got water breathing casted on me, and <laughs> so I can't. I never, I never knew what would happen. That was actually interesting. <laughs> You have a buff on, you can't die, but you're drowning and dying. I was kind of curious if it's going to let you stay there in an endless loop of dying. Um, rest shrines are here. Uh, if you want to like rest up. Now you're talking. I'll take a little peek. If you're done resting, go and. It's really no need to uh, to do that. You you can't die in here in the beginning. You could stand here in the blades and let the blades chop you in half. You know, you just take one point of damage. You have him, he takes care of the trap. A lever. Pull it. Prepare yourself. Ready. All right, we're being ambushed. Always used to look around uh, for bitch. <laughs> I got to do a trap. Chest, get a ring of water breathing. You can search. The only thing you have to do is just speak with the uh, cleric. Right here. She gives you another item. Okay, thank you. And that's good timing because uh, this will be like the end of the, the clip part for the introduction uh, for Warlock. You come out, any any of these people that got yellow over top of them, that finishes the quest, uh, again, that you're out here, the intro. And then when you come out, if you're looking at your screen, anything with these yellow... Uh, cups like this are quest givers that want to give you a quest uh, and I will pick up from there again the next time uh, that I start the, the next part of the series I just did the intro series and now the next series will be the leveling series and that will conclude this part thank you see you soon see you in the next one alright so now that I'm done I'm going to go uh, logging out here and I'll just clip that first part of the uh, you know of the of the thing so now I'm actually going over to my warlock and playing let me change the name of this now leveling warlock even though